This video contains major spoilers for the manga and movie of Homunculus. You might not get a full grasp of what I'm talking about without having read the manga. Keep that in mind, or just go read the manga and come back here. Homunculus is my favorite seinen manga. It's about a homeless man, Susumu Nakoshi, trying to find meaning in his life while living in his car in between a park full of homeless and the nicest hotel in Shinjuku, Japan. He's approached by Minobu Ito, a medical student who offers to pay Nakoshi to undergo trepanation, a surgery where a hole is drilled into your head, releasing blood flow and possibly awakening a sixth sense. This sixth sense turns out to be seeing other people's trauma, personified in the way that they look. Long story short, after Nakoshi develops this ability, he looks for the trauma in other people in order to find himself, and hurts everyone around him in the process, and especially himself. Nakoshi is not a reliable narrator, leading to most of the story to raise more questions than it answers. I love homunculus. However, this is not a video about that. When I heard rumors that a live action adaptation was in production, my initial reaction was that of disgust. Can you really blame me? Live action adaptations of nearly anything are almost always half-assed or cannot capture what makes the property so beloved. However, when the first trailers came out, a lot of my disgust was relieved. The visual atmosphere seemed to capture the feeling of the manga and the character designs were really accurate. I also learned the director was Takashi Shimizu, who was the mind behind the Grudge movies and the Tomie live action remake. Think of that what you will. So did this movie capture the brilliance of the manga, or is it the same as every other live action remake? This movie made me want to drill a hole in my head. I went into this movie with an open mind, and I tried to understand that for a movie's pacing and time length, some things may have to be cut or changed. I went in expecting this. But even on its own merits, parts of this movie are genuinely nonsensical. Before I rip this movie a new one, I feel like I should give my positives on it first. There's an incredible opening credit scene of the trepanation that I actually think is better than the manga. It's a great way to open the film, setting the visual atmosphere almost immediately. This eye eclipse shot is fucking great, and it's referenced multiple times throughout the movie. The audio design is really good in this movie, particularly in the trepanation scenes. Trepanation by Millennium Parade plays during the drilling scenes in this movie. It's a great song, truly a banger. In the scene where Nakoshi and Ito first meet, the camera framing has Ito's face half dark while talking about trepanation. That's some pretty clever visual foreshadowing for Nakoshi. And I mean, overall, the movie's production is just great. The character designs are faithful, the shot composition is great, and at times will recreate shots from the manga nearly perfectly. But I don't think that's an entirely good thing. The movie wants to keep the imagery, characters, and feel of the manga without committing to what's most important. The writing that makes it work. For example, the driving force behind the plot. The characters. Personally, the worst decision you can make when adapting Homunculus is not making Nakoshi a bad person. Guess what the movie did? If anything, Movie Boy has little to no defining characteristics. Even though the entire movie follows him, there's really nothing special here. As I'm sitting here writing this script, I'm genuinely struggling to write anything notable about his portrayal in this movie. All I can really think of is that in both medias, Nakoshi is a pathological liar whose left side of his mouth raises when he's lying. Even then, in the movie this appears twice, while the manga makes this a consistent character trait that also enhances the story thematically. The movie just barely tips its toes into any sort of depth, then immediately pulls itself out before having any time to flesh out its ideas. Let's see an example. The end of the Yakuza arc. After assisting a Yakuza boss deal with his suppressed trauma of cutting off another boy's finger when he was young, Nakoshi begins spontaneously laughing on the way to his car. He's hysterical. He finds the idea of a man suppressing his issues and hurting other people over it is ridiculous. But as tears slowly well up in his eyes, he remembers a near identical childhood incident to the one the Yakuza boss went through. He's bawling his eyes out. He cannot fathom the idea of a man coming to terms with trauma because he cannot do it himself. Next time he sees himself, he has accumulated part of the Yakuza's homunculi. Now that his trauma is right in front of him, why doesn't he attempt to fix it? because he's lying to himself. So what's the movie version like? Well, I'm glad you asked, because nothing happens. None of this from the manga comes back at all. And the next time Nikoshi looks at himself in the mirror, he has accumulated part of the Yakuza's homunculi. Why? The backstory of Nikoshi's identical moment never happens in this movie, so why would he have a robot arm? 
He doesn't share the same trauma as the Yakuza in this movie, so it makes no sense. This change is a great example of how a lot of Nakoshi's depth is just missing. Whether it be for time restraints or lack of effort, Nakoshi in this movie is kind of just a nothing character. There's so much po missed potential here. For a psychological thriller, this shit ain't so thrilling. Gyo Ayano is a great actor, but it's the material he's working with that doesn't work. So please, make Nakoshi emotionally unavailable. Make him selfish and narcissistic. That's one of the many things that makes the manga so fascinating, how such an awful person can be so relatable and make you think so much about yourself. Unlike the manga's character study approach, the movie overall chooses to focus more on the relationship between Nakoshi and Ito. Speaking of which, Ito in this movie is similar to the manga character in name alone. Ito in the manga is probably the nicest, most polite character with a bit of a nuanced dark side. But I'll talk about them more in the next section, the last hour of the movie. At 59 minutes and 41 seconds in, the movie takes its first drastic turn away from the manga. For the first hour, the movie actually follows the manga fairly accurately. It goes through the intro, the Yakuza arc, the arc with the middle schooler, and then it starts taking a different turn. And I think this ending is the biggest cultivation of why this characterization, no, this movie, does not work. The final two arcs are arguably the best portions of the story. They're also my personal favorite. The first one follows Ito and Nakoshi, trying to uncover Ito's homunculi. It's three volumes of one long conversation of two acquaintances blatantly lying to each other, trying to break the other one down and uncover their personalities. Because until that point, they weren't friends, they were business partners. But this arc strengthens their bond and reveals a lot about Ito's past. Ito has what is probably the best trans representation I've ever seen. Their struggle with gender identity is incredibly nuanced, and while I don't personally relate to it, I believe it to be a great eye-opener for suppressed trans identity. After that is the last arc, following Nikoshi's past and self-discovery. Again, some of the most compelling and relatable media I've ever read. You meet a woman also trying to find her past, whose homunculi is a shifting face and who has a special relationship to Nakoshi. It's some time before we realize this is Nanako, and through her we learn about their past together, as she was the only one who would look through Nakoshi to read his heart. Her shifting face was a metaphor for her being the embodiment of every woman Nakoshi had used or wronged in the past. This arc truly gives you an idea of the true monster of this story. So what does the movie do with it? It flips the order of the last two arcs and basically rewrites them completely, and I don't mean that in a good way. Nakoshi immediately meets Nanako, fucks her, and sees a hole in her head. Now this didn't happen in the manga whatsoever, this shit's just weird. So it's revealed that Ito has been looking for amnesiacs to trepanate to see if they would read his homunculi. They made him the fucking villain. The most non-villain character in the manga is the fucking villain because the directors or the producers or the writers could not fathom a story where the main character has to be a bad person. That multi-volume conversation between Nakoshi and Ito of mind games and lying is stripped to Ito just telling Nakoshi over the phone some pseudo-intellectual bullshit about it's just a dream bro, you'll never save this girl. No, that can't be true. Nakoshi's response? Drilling a hole in his head, of course. Now this is one of the only scenes kept from the manga in this portion of the story. It's directed so well, the sound design playing the Millennium Parade track more distorted and unruly, and you can faintly hear a beating sound. The brain, it's alive, like a heart. In the manga, this scene is a cultivation of Nakoshi's character arc. It's one of my favorite moments in the entire manga. After losing his sixth sense, this scene acts as a perfect way to show just how far Nakoshi is willing to go to find himself. The ability to see through other people was the only thing that brought him the feeling of being connected to those around him. He was finally getting closer to reading himself. In the movie, he does it because... I couldn't tell you. He randomly loses the ability and there's little to no time spent experiencing how it is for him to lose his ability. Again, a major issue with this movie is the lack of time spent developing the characters. If you think you know why he does this, fe please feel free to comment because I couldn't tell you.
This shit is going to get confusing real fast, so stick with me. After Nakoshi mutilates himself for no reason, he goes to meet Nanako and Ito again. And we learn that Nanako is not actually Nanako. The real Nanako and Nakoshi were involved in a car accident. Nanako dies with another random woman in the car crash and starts to get convinced she's Nanako. That's why they have amnesia in this movie. Manga Nakoshi struggles with remembering his past because he was ugly and felt that the world ignored him. His face did not fit his own narcissistic image of himself, so he threw away his life with Nanako, the only person who saw him for who he was, and his face in order to live a new life filled with unfulfilling connections based on money and sex. He's constantly running from his problems, and thus himself. I don't think I need to explain to you that this is much more interesting than a fucking car crash. I usually dislike amnesia in storytelling, it's mostly used as a lazy way to have important characters act out of character, but in the manga, it's the result of the main character's direct action. That versus getting hit by a car. And hey, remember how Nanako's trauma is also the result of the main character? Well in the movie, she shifts faces because she thinks she's a different person. This is so fucking deep, bro. Nakoshi then takes a look at Ito's trauma. And I gotta say, this is probably the funniest part of the movie. Ito's trauma is that he did not get enough attention from his dad as a child, so he killed his dad's goldfish. In Japan, the goldfish is representative of beauty. Ito, as a child, looked at the goldfish in envy while trying on women's clothes, hoping one day he may achieve the same beauty. And the one person whose approval he sought out denied it completely. It's incredibly tragic, but the movie takes all of this, all of this, and shits all over it. Thus a scene of a grown man crying over a fucking goldfish. The movie tries to take a different direction with its characters, and make a different character the villain, and then make him sympathetic. There's nothing to sympathize with here. This has the depth of a fucking kiddie pool. It's time to talk about the ending. <sighs> Ito self trepanates himself with his right eye sewn shut, and Nakoshi drives off with a woman he doesn't know. What the fuck am I watching, man? Why would Ito do this? He already had his character arc, why are you pushing this twist ending that doesn't make any sense? Why would Nakoshi drive off with this girl? The manga's ending leaves some people dissatisfied, even myself at first. But overall, I think it's a fitting end, albeit short. It truly shows the monster Nakoshi is in just one volume. You had time to put in the fucking middle school rape arc, but not the most too compelling, thought-provoking arcs in the manga. You're gonna make one of the posters a recreation of an arc that's not even in the movie. Because this movie seems more concerned with seeming experimental and shocking rather than making any sort of sense. It just ends up missing the point of the story entirely. This movie had so much potential and I'm frankly extremely disappointed. I give this movie a read it. Only watch it if you want to make fun of it. Thank you guys so much for 300 subscribers. I'm actually astonished. Subscribe and like if you did, and uh, thanks for the video.